All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is the extra practice I was talking about for classical and operant conditioning. I know you're very sad you can't see my face this time, but I figured that um, we would just focus on the um, examples. So, okay, we're going to do a couple of classical, then a couple of operant. So the first thing is um, a friend has learned to associate the sound of a dentist drill to the fearful reaction because of a painful experience she had getting a root canal. In this example, what is the... So here's the time where you're going to want to just pause the PowerPoint and, or pause the video and figure it out, fill in all the blanks, okay, because I'm going to just keep moving on. So it's in your best interest to pause, try it yourself first, and then see if you match my answer. Okay, so here's the answer, right? The NS, right, is the drill because it is neutral, right? It is completely neutral. It has no meaning to this friend before, you know, when she was born. The pain is the UCS, and that causes the fear. Remember, the pain and the fear are the reflex. The unconditioned stimulus and the unconditioned response are the reflex. Pain causes fear naturally. But then when she connects the pain with the drill, the drill becomes the conditioned stimulus because it causes the fear, the conditioned response. All right, next. A BMW commercial has lots of pretty people in it. People who watch the commercial finding the people pleasing to look at. With repeated viewing, they begin to associate the car with the pleasant feeling. Okay, so like I said, pause, and when you're ready to move on, start again. So here's the answer, all right? The NS is the BMW commercial or the BMWs or the cars, right? And then that's connected to the pretty people, which is the UCS, because it naturally causes the UCR, which is pleasing or happy or smiley or any of those things. Sorry, that keeps popping up, okay? Then you have pretty people. Oh, my bad. That is a mistake, okay? The condition stimulus here is not pretty people, not pretty people. It is the BMW commercial, okay? The BMW commercial, uh, not the pretty people. That's my mistake. So BMW commercial is the neutral stimulus and it's the condition stimulus because eventually it causes a pleasing reaction because it's connected with the pretty people. Okay, next. You go to a fancy restaurant and decide to try an appetizer you've never tried before, ask cargo, which is a fancy name for snails. After dinner, you go to a concert and get violently ill. From then on, you can't even look at snails without feeling sick. Okay, pause and move on when you're ready. Okay, so you have snails mean nothing, right? Food poisoning naturally causes you to get ill. It's the UCS and the UCR. Then eventually snails become the conditioned stimulus because they cause you to get ill, the conditioned response. All right, last one. Tom absolutely loves going to the beach every summer. Sorry. Tom absolutely loves going to the beach every summer. He loves the sun, the cool breeze, the ocean air, and the smell of the salt in the air. Or the ocean water and the smell of the salt in the air. One summer, he kept seeing a girl named Sally every time he went for a swim. They began to talk, walk along the beach together, and play beach volleyball. By the end of the summer, Tom found that he was deeply in love with Sally, even though at first glance, she didn't seem to be the kind of girl who typically interested him. So, see what you got. Okay, so here's the answer. Sally is neutral in the beginning. She means nothing to Tom. Tom naturally loves the beach, right? So, you know, it's naturally pleasing to be somewhere. You know, you don't have to learn to like the beach, right? The sun is beating down on you. It smells good, right? All of that makes you happy naturally, okay? Sally is connected with the beach, and eventually Sally becomes connected with love. So Sally plus beach equals love, and then Sally equals love. Okay, so now we're on to operant conditioning, okay? And here's the chart. I don't know how to fix that. Here's the chart that I gave you in class, okay? So, when Thomas was caught writing on the wall with his markers, his markers were taken away from him. And when Abdul came home with all A's and B's in his report card, he was given $20. So ask yourself, what is the uh, behavior and what is the consequence? And then is the behavior going to increase or decrease? And is something being added or taken away? So stop, figure it out. Here's your answers. When Thomas was caught writing on the wall, this is negative punishment because his markers were taken away from him, taken away, right? And it's punishment because he's going to decrease the behavior of writing on the wall. Abdul is positive reinforcement because he was given something, he was given $20, and he's going to continue to get A's and B's. Okay, next one. Best cell player who commits a fragrant foul is removed from the game. His foul is decreased. After Jody flirted with someone else at the party, her boyfriend, it should say, yelled at her. Uh, sorry, Jody didn't flirt at all at the next party. A basketball player commits a flagrant foul, is removed from the game. 
his false decrees. This is negative punishment because he is removed from the game. Something is taken away and he's going to stop doing it. Jody's flirting with someone. Her boyfriend yelled at her for an hour. This is positive punishment. The behavior of flirting will decrease and the thing that's being added is being yelled at. Okay. After completing an alcohol education program, the suspension of your driver's license is lifted. More drivers now complete the program. Pause. Move on when you're ready. This is negative reinforcement because the behavior of the alcohol education program will increase, right? And that's because something negative, the suspension, is being taken away. So the suspension is being removed. Okay. Here's our uh, interval or our uh, reinforcement schedules. Okay. So same chart that you had in class again. Getting a small increase in your hourly wage every six months. And every time you buy a sandwich, you get your card punched. After 10 punches, you get a free sandwich. So, again, pause, figure it out, ask yourself, do I get the reward after a number of times or do I have to wait a length of time? Do I know or do I not know when I'm getting it? So take guesses before you know the answer. Okay, getting a small increase in your hourly wage every six months is fixed interval. It's interval because you have to wait a length of time every six months and it's fixed because it's every six, so you know. Every time you buy a sandwich, your car gets punched. After 10 punches, free sandwich. This is fixed ratio. You have to, you have to, you, you get the reward after a number of times, right? And you know the number of times it's 10. Okay, here's three more. Students are released from class at the end of the period. A worker is paid two dollars for every 100 envelopes, and a winning a large prize on a scratchy lottery ticket. Pause. Okay, so students are released from class when the end of the period bell rings. This is an example of fixed interval, okay? The reason it's interval is because the students have to wait a length of time for the reward. The reward is being released from class, right? So they have to wait a length of time, they have to wait the whole period, right? And it's fixed because they know when they're gonna get the reward, they're gonna get the reward of leaving from class at the end of the period. So they have to wait till the end, but they know it's the end, so it's fixed interval. A worker is paid $2 for every 100 envelopes. This is fixed ratio, right? Because it's a number of times, 100 envelopes, and they know what they're, they know, it's a number of times, right? And they know what it is. It's 100, okay? And the last one, winning a large prize on a scratchy lotto ticket. This is variable ratio, okay? Because you have to buy, it's, a, it's you get the reward after a number of lottery tickets you buy, right? Not a length of time you play the lotto, but the number of tickets you buy, right? And it's variable because you never know which number of times. Is it the fifth lotto ticket, the seventh, the tenth, the fourteenth, the hundred and fifth? You don't know how many times you have to buy a lottery ticket before you win, okay? So I hope some of these help. If you still have questions, email me, or you can ask me a question on Twitter at hashtag MHSAPsych, okay? All right, or AP Psychology. Sorry. That's all for now, AP Psychos. And remember, psychology is flipping awesome. Now go study.